It's a good day for a baseball game. It's hot and sunny as can be. Fans are walking around in Fenway Park and not a drop of water to see. Don't be afraid, Babe Ruth is here. Look in his hands, a Pepsi can to quench your thirst with ease. A full 12 ounce of Pepsi will leave no thirst in thee. So listen up, folks. Buy a Pepsi, not a Coke. For only 10 cents a can, you can be a fan. Good morning and happy New Year's Eve, New York. You're listening to the Spiffy Sports Radio Station, also known as the KSSRS. I'm the biggest bimbo of all broadcasting, Zach Jago, and next to me here is my main dame, Miss Jillian Woody, bringing you the best highlights on the bee's knees of all athletes. As we are approaching the year of 1930, today's show will be all about the decade in review of sports. First off, Jill and I would like to talk to you about the sports events that brought us to this broadcast today. There are many sports that have grown very fast in a short period of time. The 1920s is becoming a golden age for sports. Now my fellow broadcaster would like to talk to you about the bee's knees that have been catching everyone's eye. Thank you, Zach, for that hotsy totsy introduction. I am a huge sports fan, and it means a lot to be here reporting on the greatest athletes of all the 1920s. Like my partner said, the 1920s was a decade of sports development. I would first like to recognize some very important sports stars from this decade. First, Babe Ruth is known for his keen baseball skills, Jack Dempsey for his swell boxing expertise, Johnny Weissmuller's amazing swimming, Newt Rockney and Red Grange's admirable football capability, Bill Tilden and Helen Willis for tennis, and Bobby Jones and Glenna Colleton for golf. All these sports players are the duckiest of all players in their sport. I agree. These players are some of the best in the world. Now that we are approaching the year of 1930, sports are now thought of differently. There is a new chance of business and a chance to make some good dough. Fans for these sports are getting more and more interested. The sports entertainment is becoming more and more popular. The progression of technology has also helped grow the sports industry. People all around the country have newly purchased televisions and radios for their own homes just to watch and listen to sports. The very few Americans without radios and TVs are fans at every game watching and supporting the fantastically talented athletes. We will be back after a short break. Are you a sports person interested in finding love? Do you wish that special someone would be cheering you on at your game in the crowd? We can help you find that person. Finding love is very simple using 1-800-ATHLETES-MINGLE with the telephone extension of L-O-V-E. With only 19 small payments of 20 clams, you could find undying love with the person you commonly share your passion for sports with. Once again, call today at 1-800-ATHLETES-MINGLE. One more time, 1-800-ATHLETES-MINGLE with the telephone extension of L-O-V-E. You don't have to be single with 1-800-ATHLETES-MINGLE. Welcome back to the Spiffy Sports Radio Station. I am Zach Jago and I would like to tell you about the exciting Olympics in the 1920s. There have been many changes and amazing moments in the Olympics in the last 10 years. The first Winter Olympic, Olympic Games took place in 1924. Pavo Normi won five gold medals in track and field during the Summer Olympics of 1924. The new era of sports has started. Wow, that is just simply astonishing. I will now talk about some of the main events that have happened in the past decade. First in, on August 20th, 20th, 1920, the National Football League was created. The league consisted of only 11 teams. Another very important and influential event was the creation of the Negro National League of Baseball on February 13, 1920 by a handful of team owners. This league was the first African American baseball league to hold stability and last more than one season. Now, African Americans might have the chance to be integrated with white people in baseball for the first time. In 1922, a major accomplishment for swimming took place. The first 100-meter freestyle stroke was swum in under a minute. Now that's just mind-boggling. Also, in 1923, Ty Cobb took the baseball record for most hits while playing for the Detroit Tigers. In 1924, from January 25th through February 5th, the world's first Winter Olympics was held in France. The events took place at the foot of Mount Blanc in Chamonix. <laughs> now I'll hand the mic off to my friend Zach to finish off the decade in review. Wow, it's amazing how much has gone, in the, gone on in the past decade. Also, in 1926, the famous boxers Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney fought for the heavy boxing title. Gene Tunney came out on top, saying, on top staying undefeated, 
but Jack Dempsey would try for the title next year. Finally, in 1925, the French Open was open to non-French players for the first time. In 1926, Gertrude Ederle, Ederle became the first woman to swim across the English Channel. I remember that. It was the most amazing thing ever. I couldn't even imagine swimming that far in ice cold water, especially because freezing cold water will knock the air right out of you. She must have been training for that accomplishment for a lifetime. That is a good point. She's a very hotsy totsy swimmer. Also, in 1927, the first Ryder Cup of golf took place. Finally, women's athletics and gymnastics were held for the first time in the Summer Olympics of 1928. Gee willikers, that is simply amazing. Lastly for the show, we have an exclusive interview with one of the most phenomenal baseball players in the Negro League. My partner Jillian will be interviewing Mr. Satchel Page. Come on in, Satchel. Woo! Hello, Satchel. It is very nice to meet you. You too, miss. It is a great pleasure to be here. I have many questions for you. The first being, when did you start your professional career in the Negro Leagues? In 1926, I started playing for the Chattanooga Black Lookouts of the ne Negro Southern League. That is just wonderful. How old were you when you started playing for them? I was 20 years old. Wow, that is the prime time for any person, let alone a very talented athlete. What position do you play? I'm a right-handed pitcher. How cool! Finally, how do you think playing on the Negro Leagues will affect you in your future career? Because we are one of the first African American teams to remain constant, I believe this is the first step to gain more equality as a black baseball player. We are just as good as white people, so I strongly believe in the future. We can combine to an interracial baseball team. <laughs> I believe that as well. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Woo! Well, thank you all very much for listening to the 1920s Decade in Review broadcasted to you by KSSRS. I am Miss Jillian Woody. And I am Mr. Zach Jago. Have a great night and a happy new year.